Good AI Morning Islanders, and today I'll be taking you on a trip back in time to find out if I would have survived the Titanic or not with the power of artificial intelligence. So sit back, relax, do your favorite snack, and let's get started, shall we? All right, Islanders, so today's video was supposed to be all about data clean, but I'm getting very tired of just doing all those technical stuff, and I really just want to start doing a project, which is exactly what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be taking the very classic Titanic data set and converting it into a data set that we can actually use to predict if yours truly would have been one of the first to freeze to death on the Titanic. For those new to the Islander community, this community is all about making artificial intelligence accessible by using Python to learn applications of artificial intelligence through demonstration. And my name is William McKeon. I started my college career as an electrical engineering student, but I struggled a lot as an electrical engineering student. But somehow during that struggle, I had taught myself Python and everything you all see on this channel. Before we actually start going on to this journey, I want to ask you all to leave a comment down below on whether or not you think yours truly would be the very first to freeze to death on the Titanic as well as if you know of any classic data sets go ahead and leave them down in the comment section down below but really that's enough talking why don't we start getting on with this journey shall we all right so for today's video we're going to be needing of course the pandas data frame well, not pandas data frame the pandas python package our very own ir data cleaning python package as well as the numpy python package and the seaborn python package the last two sgd classifier as well as train test split will be going more in depth over in future videos but really today we're going to be focusing in on just data cleaning the titanic data set which we're going to be getting from the seaborn's load data set this is a database that's specifically that allows you to be able to access a whole boatload of different types of data sets but just because you get it the data set from a reputable database does not always mean that it's going to be fully clean which you all see in today's video once we have imported all those python packages we can really now start going in and figuring out what is going on underneath the hood of our data set. First off, by coming over to this cell right quick and actually calling upon the head method. And what the head method, for those of you that don't know what it is, it's just gonna allow us to see the first few rows of our data set inside each column. And what am I doing, head? And this is what I'm talking about. It gives you an idea of what's going on within your data set. Now, what we can tell is survives probably going to be our attribute column since we want to find out whether or not I survived or not, as well as there's going to be some one hot encoding being done for this data set. And from deck, I can tell there are some missing values within deck as well. Now, whether or not there's missing values in the other columns, we're going to be able to find out by calling the info method. So, titanic underscore df info now you can just easily use titanic underscore df dot was it describe and it gives you a lot of the same information but what i like about the info method is the way that it's set up the info method is easier for me to read and understand than the describe but either way they're going to give you the same results now what i can tell off of very right off the bat is that age has quite a bit amount of missing values based off of how i can tell that all these columns are supposed to be around 891 you can tell right here how it says range index 891 and as well as the first three row well first three columns have a length of 891 so age should be around that that length and it's missing quite a bit so i don't know what i'm going to do just yet but why don't we start looking over more of what's going on within this data set to figure out if we can use other row or well, other columns to help us out with these missing values inside of age now parch fair embarked is an object column and it has 889 missing values with how little that is i would consider actually just dropping those missing values but let's just see like i was saying with with age if there's any rows that can help us out here and class is a category. So since it's a category column, we're still gonna wanna be using one hot encoder because we're not using class as an attribute column. Now, what's the difference between an attribute column and features, which is what everything else is gonna be considered? A attribute column is actually the Y values, what we are trying to predict. So in our circumstance, like I was saying, survive is going to be our attribute column. And that's going to be the values that we're trying to predict. We're trying to predict if I would survive or not. And then the features are all of your X values. Those are the values that are going to help you come up with that prediction. Now, since we're not using class as our attribute column, we can actually use one hot encoder to change that category column into a more digestible 
type of call well like more digestible information for our model at the end who is also an object column so we're going to probably have to use one hot encoder on that as well or we could use ordinal encoder it all depends on how the values counts end up for that and then adult male is a boolean that's totally fine we don't want to mess around deck has 203 that is a lot of missing values as well as based off of my background knowledge of the time period class and deck probably have the same amount of value within our model because where we whatever deck you were living on on that boat at that time period correspond with the class that you were in so therefore we can actually just i feel very confident in just dropping the deck column the deck column and not having any issues with the model's performance if we were to keep deck inside of our model it would cause it a lot more issues than it's worth. so that's why i'm just going to just drop it right off the bat and then what's another one? Embarktown. Now, Embarktown has 889 missing values, where Embarked has 889. Chances are those two columns have the same missing values, since I'm willing to bet they have the same values inside of them, with maybe a few exceptions. So I feel very confident now in actually just dropping those missing values within those two columns. Now, why don't we just continue on to actually doing some value count evaluation? And this is going to get a little boring, so what we're going to do actually is Fast forward to the point where I show you all of you what I found out by using the values count. So I'll see you all in a couple of seconds for you, but probably a couple of minutes for me. All right, guys, so based off of the data discovery, I found out a couple of things. There's no inconsistent data within this data set. And besides missing and one hot encoder, we don't have to do any other type of data preppers, pepper, if I can speak correct, prepper eight, data preparation for this data set or data cleaning. And the next thing we're going to want to do actually is start making those corrections. What I found with the age is that there's three categories inside the who column right here. There's three categories, man, woman, and child. Each one of those categories has a mean age that represents those categories. So what we're going to want to do inside of these missing values is actually replace those missing values with the corresponding age of those categories well corresponding mean age of those categories on where those missing values fall upon and the other thing is is embarked and embarked town are basically the same thing almost so what we're going to end up doing is just and we're going to drop the missing values that are missing from those data sets now more on dropping missing values in a couple of seconds because you just can't drop missing values just like that there's some stuff you have to make sure before you do it and then deck is going to be actually just fully dropped out because based off the background information and the research that i did we can actually supplement this with class so class is going to become more relevant and it's going to hold more value than it did if we use deck. But at the same time, deck would have caused some harm for our final prediction. So what we're going to want to do next now is start making those corrections to our data set. So the first thing we're going to do is actually make the corrections to the age column. This whole function right here, I go really in depth inside of the how to for this specific video on my GitHub. The way that you can get the link to the GitHub is by installing the GitHub while well, installing the Python package IR data clean and calling upon IR data cleaning's resource method. More on how to install IR data cleaning on your local system, whether you're using PIP or Kana, down in the description bar down below. So go ahead and check that out. But anyways, I'm going to run this real quick. And the next thing we're going to want to do in order to actually make the corrections to deck, we're going to want to just drop it. So we're just going to say Titanic underscore DF dot drop this is really important to do especially since we're going to be saying drop na for embarked and embarked town so we're going to say columns equals deck now since we're not creating a whole nother data set we're going to want to say in place equals true because as soon as we're done running this line it's just going to essentially be added back into our data set so we don't want that in our case so we're going to say in place equals true run that and oh i didn't put a comma right here run that real quick and the next thing we're going to want to do and the reason why i said you can't just drop missing values is when we if we were to keep titanic well if we were to keep the deck column within this all our columns would have length of where are you 
203. That's not what we wanted. That's the whole reason why we decided to drop deck was because of how much missing values it has. So by dropping deck, we're not going to reduce the length of our columns down to 203. Instead, we're going to be reducing the length of our columns down to 889, which is why I feel comfortable just dropping those missing values within that col within those two columns because it's Essentially, what we're doing is just dropping that whole row that has a missing value in it. And the way that we're going to be able to do that is by coming down to the cell. We're going to say Titanic underscore not drop NA. And then the only input argument you need for this is just going to be in place equals true. Once we've done that, we have done all the corrections we need to do for the missing values. All right, Islanders, so like I said earlier on in today's video, we're not going to be really going that far in depth on anything past what we just did. But like I promised you all, also we're going to find out whether or not I would have survived the Titanic. So the very first thing we're going to have to do is take our data set and split it up into four different data sets. First one's going to be X train which is what we got right here, then X test, Y train, Y test. And we're going to set this equal to a very specific method within SK learns linear model, I think is what it's called. But we're going to call upon the train underscore test underscore split. And we're going to be passing in three input arguments are essentially our features attribute, which is going to be everything except for survive, which is exactly why I have Titanic underscore DF dot drop columns equals survived and I don't have in place because I don't want survive to be permanently deleted from this data set because we're going to be using the survived column for our attribute column which is going to be the titanic underscore df dot survived once we've done that we're going to specify our trained size and everything that we just went over in that just couple of seconds we're going to be going more further in depth in the next video where we're going to also be using a decision tree classifier. So make sure you're subscribed to learn more about that. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be creating an instance of the SGD classifier. Now, what is the SGD classifier? Where essentially it is a binary classification model where it's only essentially going to be picking out of the whole data set one thing, which is perfect for our data set since we're going to be using buying well essentially true and false values and therefore after we've done that and we can now fit the model to our data set so we're going to be passing in what well, we're going to call upon sgd underscore class which is the instance of our classifier dot fit and then within that fit method we're going to be passing in our x train and our y train as well once we've done that we can now start making predictions by calling upon um, by assigning the predictions to the y predict so we're going to say y underscore pred equals sgd underscore class dot predict and we're going to pass in x underscore test this is the data set that's going to allow us to be able to create some to be able to create predictions once we've done that now we can start to figure out whether or not i personally would have survived i don't think i would have but let's just run this part of the code enter 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 and turns out, yeah, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have lived. It says, will I have, will I live through the Titanic? False. Meaning, no. And unfortunately, your favorite homeboy would have died. Now, in order to get your hands on this data set, a clean version of this data set, as well as all the code that we went over in today's video, go ahead and check out the pip commands and conda commands down below to get your hands on our community's Python package IR data cleaning. Within the IR data cleaning, if you use the resource method, it will print out a link to this YouTube video as well as the GitHub link. And Really, thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more and learn more about artificial intelligence, go ahead and check out the videos popping up on the screen. As always, happy coding and don't forget to laugh. Bye.